is this hill in Nagano City. It has 40 cherry trees growing on it, so it looks gorgeous when they are blossoming in April. It also has a small shrine on top of it. It is not an ordinary shrine though. If you look at it from above, it looks like a keyhole. Hills of this shape and form can be found everywhere in Japan. Some are small and inconspicuous, such as this one, just like a hill next to a road. Others are large, of really epic proportions. They are called kofun, and they are ancient tumuli, or in other words, tombs. They are also the name giver of the kofun period of Japan, which was from about 300 to 538. Now, you have seen the title of the video, so what's actually inside this kind of tombs? I will not dig a hole here, but in order to take a look inside, we need to go more to the south of Nagano city. And we can do that from here by bike. The river you are seeing here is the Chikuma River. It is the longest river in Japan and it actually has something to do with our story today. We are now at the Omuro Tumuli Cluster, which contains a couple of graves, all very old, more than a thousand years. And as you can see, not all of the Kofun are actually keyhole shaped. Some of them are round. It is assumed that the shape changed from round to keyhole over the years, but more on that later. For now, let's take a look at those tombs. As you can see, not all of the tombs are actually nicely shaped like a hill or keyhole. Some of them are just heaps of stones. And these stones came here from the Chikuma River, the river we have seen before. This is tomb number 244. It is the largest one in this cluster. The outside has been restored and reinforced by concrete. However, the inside still looks like it looked 1500 years ago. It is certainly large, larger than I would have expected. It's a little bit wet in here. Height is maybe 250 even. And width might be 170, 160 centimeters. So the person that was buried here really had enough space. Length might be five or six meters. As expected, <laughs> of course, there's nothing in here anymore, but the feeling I get when I'm inside of this is really not so great. It really feels like I'm at a funeral or the graveyard, which I am. That being said, who was actually buried inside of these graves, inside of these tombs? For that, let's go to another place. There's another very big keyhole shaped tomb a couple of kilometers from here. And for that, this time we need to take the train. Now this was definitely one of the less fun things I've done in my time in Japan so far. taking the stairs because it said they are faster but there's still stairs why do there have to be so many stairs and mountains oh it's mountains in Nagano <sighs> I love mountains but I don't love climbing mountains I love being on top of mountains but I don't love getting on top of mountains but I guess it's part of the journey and it's my Japanese journey oh wow now, this is very, very impressive. And coming up here and even taking the stairs might have actually been, it definitely was worth it.
I must say, it is pretty damn spectacular. This is just gigantic and imagine being buried inside of this, like one person only. And then remember that this was built 1500 years ago. And the people had to bring all this stuff up here and form this giant tomb, all with their own hands. Who was actually led to rest in these kind of gigantic tombs? Well, as you can see from this one, it has two very big stairs. And the ones with two stairs were reserved for kings. So in this grave, an ancient king of Shinano province, which is today Nagano prefecture, was led to rest. There are also ones with three stairs, and these were reserved for emperors. The ones with one stair then was reserved for other royalty. This kofun has a length of 100 meters and is the largest of its kind in Nagano prefecture. That being said, in comparison, that doesn't mean so much, because so far, in all of Nagano, there have only been 60 of them discovered until now. In all of Japan, however, it are more than 160,000. Why this shape? Why the keyhole form? There is a theory for that. It is suggested that previously, before the keyholes, all of the kofun were round and they were surrounded by moats filled with water. So accessing the tombs was actually pretty hard. And in order to do that then, they made land-filled bridges, which then over the years became part of the actual form of the tomb. Hence, the keyhole shape was born. As you can see, there are this kind of terracotta clay objects all over the kofun. And they are called haniwa, funerary objects often buried with the person, but also put on top of the kofun. You certainly do have a beautiful view from here, although probably the person laid to rest here didn't have too much from it once this had happened. But if you want to come here, then please do so. It's very nice, it's impressive. And all the things I visited today are linked in the description. So just go there, find out how to get here, and once you can come to Japan, maybe take a look. You probably couldn't see it, but in the end, it actually started snowing up there. So when it's getting that cold, then finishing off a day like this with a Japanese hot pot is the perfect way to do it. And with that, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. You will find a lot of information about Kofun and this period in the description box below. If you liked the video, please give it a like as well. For now though, thank you for watching and see you next time.